staging of definitive and certain meniere's disease how do we stage the staging is made on audiometry so whenever we know that there is a patient who has a hearing loss we definitely want an audiometry to understand the amount of hearing loss so stage 1 is when the hearing loss is less than 25% stage 2 26 to 40 decibels 3 is 41 to 70 and stage 4 is more than 70 decibels hearing loss so based upon the pure tone average you're going to stage the patient is in stage 1 2 3 or 4 coming to the treatment part of meniere's disease see now we've understood about the hearing staging the patient on the basis of hearing loss we've understood the test for vertigo we've understood how to diagnose the vertigo the investigation of choice the scales that we have from the patient patient reported scales in terms of their functional disability so when we are sure the possibility is meniere's disease, how are we going to start the therapy? Always dietary restriction is something that we should explain the patient. Reduced salt intake, reduced water intake, reduced caffeine intake. These are some things that is a must. So dietary restriction for sodium and caffeine are traditionally advised by clinicians to prevent the attacks of meniere's. Medications with diuretics still form one of the first line medical therapy in many clinics. So you can give acetazolamine or hydrochlorothiazide or a combination of both for patients who have this. But typically because of use of diuretics, they can have excessive diuresis, excessive urination, sodium and potassium imbalance and hence that requires certain amount of monitoring. But a low dose of acetazolamide or hydrochlorothiazide can be given in patients with meniere's. Beta histine. Beta histine is a drug that is commonly used in the treatment of vertigo. It is a labyrinthine suppressant. So, this labyrinthine suppressant will suppress the inner ear and the receptors which are improperly functioning and just control the disease. Sometimes it can also help in resolution but it is typically used for control of vertigo. Can we give anti-allergic therapy? Yes, because we know allergy is a predisposing factor. Should we put the endocrinological problems in control like say hypothyroidism being corrected, hypoadrenalism being corrected, hypopituitarism being corrected? Yes. Should we also make the patient sure that um, if there is a allergy, autoimmune or an endocrinological pathology, can we give a dose of steroid? Yes. So steroids also may be used but with care. Now, which form of steroid would be the best for patient? Would it be the systemic steroids? or would it be the intratympanic steroids? Now, systemic steroids we know has a very less bioavailability in the inner ear and intratympanic steroids can have a higher bioavailability. Systemic steroids will have a lot of adverse effects. Intratympanic steroids will have less adverse effects. So, intratympanic steroids have evolved as one of the important treatment in patients with meniere's disease. So, when we have patients with meniere's, we are going to treat the patient with in the acute episodes with labyrinthine suppressants with vasodilators for a chronic therapy you can give beta histine you can give diuretics as the medical treatment of choice now trans tympanic and intra tympanic therapies are something that is coming into popularity there is a device called as the minute device what is a minute device it is a trans tympanic low pressure therapy now, this therapy was established after reports of subjective improvement of acute vertigo attacks was seen when pressure changes were induced in the in a pressure chamber. So, it has a small device that is kept in the canal that gives intermittent pulse pressure. This intermittent pulse pressure has so shown to reduce the number of attacks and subjective improvement in patients who have acute vertigo. Now, based upon these reports, Minnet's device was conceived producing repeated 0.6 second pulse low pressure transmitted through the ventilating tube. The treatment consists of 3 to 4 cycles of a 5 minute treatment sequence. So, you are going to give a pressure of 0.6 for 0.6 seconds pulse. How many times? 3 to 4 times and how many times each cycle? 5 minutes treatment cycle. So, that device is called as a minutes device. Intratympanic steroid, I have told you through the tympanic membrane, you are going to uh, instill the drug in the middle ear and through the round window membrane, the drug is going to get absorbed into the inner ear. Now, the mechanism of how steroids act on the inner ear is because it will result in a homeostasis of the transmembrane water transporters, the aquaporins, which have got dysregulated. So, it will regulate them and improve the function.
If intratympanic steroids fail, then what do we have as a treatment option to destroy the labyrinth? So we can give aminoglycosides, intratympanic gentamicin to destroy the labyrinth. Now, these there are several pathways by, by via which we can destroy the labyrinth, but the one that happens here is through NMDA. So, NMDA is getting destroyed and because of which the patient's labyrinth and function will not be at its best and hoping with this that the symptoms of vertigo will come down. But the patient can have a permanent sensorineural hearing loss.